You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. Now, this episode, I have talked about this topic before on other episodes, but I want to look at it a little bit different, you know, a different way today and bring it home at a very, you know, grassroots level. This episode is about attention. And you've heard me say, you are where your attention is. Keep listening. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I want to talk about attention. Obviously, I just said that in this episode. I don't read reviews on the podcast. I appreciate them because they help what I assume is the iTunes algorithm. But as far as reading them, I don't. And I know that we vacillate between 4.9 stars and 5 stars for this podcast. But I I haven't looked at them in months. And first and foremost, I want to say I'm grateful. Thank you so much for the, uh, the the amazing reviews. I mean, I'm very I love what I do. I'm very grateful to be able to serve. And as I scrolled, I had to go to iTunes a couple of days ago and look for something. And I and by the way, we are actually I am the podcast is featured on top podcast on iTunes in the educational section. And again, I am honored and blessed and thank you so so much. I think, for example, which is where I was, you know, a few days ago, when you're with, you know, Tony Robbins and Abraham Hicks and people like that, you're probably doing pretty good. But anyway, so as I, as I opened the review page, they were, there were all five stars and there was one three-star review. Now I don't let reviews get me down. And the reason I I don't read them is because I don't want to get into them. Meaning it doesn't matter to me entirely what the reviews are other than, you know, the more five-star reviews, the more people I can help, as I was just just saying about the algorithm on iTunes. But there's a three-star review, and I read it, and it had nothing to do with the podcast per se. The person said along these lines, and, you know, it doesn't matter who it was or any of that. It was just, it was, it actually gave me the, the motivation and the thought for today's episode. So I have a debt of gratitude to the person who left me a three-star review. The three-star review wasn't about the podcast. Someone said, this person basically was saying she couldn't listen to the podcast because I smack. Now, I've listened to other episodes and I haven't heard the smacking, but of course I could have, you know, I could be biased, obviously. But no one else, out of all the millions of downloads, no one has ever complained about me smacking. I mean, if you want me to smack, I can come to the podcast and go... You know, and smack like that. But anyway, this person complained. And in that moment, I recognized, well, you know, this is where this person has their attention. And they're very, very easily distracted. Now, if you've never noticed it or it doesn't exist, I don't know. It's partly subjective. What I want to point out here, and again, thank the person for, you know, making that comment, whether it be accurate or not, is that people look for things to focus on and they look for things and they're pulled by things that drive them crazy. And then what do they do? They focus on it and focus on it and focus on it and focus on it. And they drive themselves crazier and crazier and crazier by having their attention, by where they're focusing. And people focus on things that drive them crazy. And I do want to point out again, you know, in defense of of this is that it's partly brain. Well, it's all, I mean, you, you have a brain, but it's partly that the brain looks for things that stand out. 
So what I want to talk about in this episode is two things. One is petty annoyances and the other is circumstances of life. Now, I know that I often say this. I don't know how long this episode will be. And just being completely transparent with you, today is the summer solstice. Sharing that and why does it matter? The reason why is I, working with a shaman for so many years, I am deeply affected by cosmic and lunar and solar cycles. As a matter of fact, I don't even travel on the full moon because it's just sometimes my energy is just too wonky. And if you're new to the podcast, just disregard <laughs> disregard this comment and, and keep on going. So I don't know how long this episode is going to be. I mean, I could, I could actually synopsize and summarize this episode in one sentence. But if I did that, people would be like, okay, that's really good. But I want to bring it home for you. So the reason I op- open this can of worms is I don't know how long this episode will be. It could be 10 minutes. It could be. And when I say that, I find that, oh, there's going to be a short episode. And it ends up being 45 minutes long. But let's go to annoyances and attention. So I talked about or I mentioned petty annoyances and circumstances of life. Petty annoyances, basically, as I just mentioned, it's that these are little bitty things that get under our skin. They drive us crazy. And there was an incident in my room last couple of weeks in my transformational coaching program where someone had said that they have a family member who smacks their food. And instant, and you know, instantaneously I could relate because I have a family member who is about, I don't know, 65 years old. And as long as I've known her for 20 years, I mean, she didn't just smack her food when she eats. It's like, you know, it's like a, a storm going on. You know what I mean? It's like mega smack, mega smack. And it used to drive me crazy when she did that. I mean, my belief, <laughs> you know, my belief system and my thought is close your mouth. And I'm surprised that food's not falling out of her mouth. But when I say she smacks, because I've looked, trust me, is, I mean, she just, her mouth goes, you know, wide open, wide open, wide open, smack, 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 wide open, wide open. And I sit there and I, well, not anymore, but I used to sit there at dinner and go, oh my God, I'm going to take this fork and stab myself in the eye. You know, this is, how can this person not know this? How can her, her husband not have told her about this? Now she's an amazing person and she's a wonderful sister-in-law and I do love her very much. But this day and age, when we see each other and we sit down to eat, I already know before I sit down, okay, Jim, you're going to have to move your attention because she is going to smack away while she's eating. And someone in my group had said, you know, Jim, what do I do when people smack their food? So as I want to point out, when someone does something petty, number one, you're judging them. If you're annoyed by it, number one, and if it triggers you, you are judging them. And secondly, you're just placing your attention there because I realized over the years, and I've talked about my brother-in-law, Don Humber, the shaman. And one of the most powerful things he's ever taught me is no matter what in life, move your attention. And a phrase that he says, says often, and I have it here in the podcast in different places is you are where your attention is. Now think for a moment. If someone's smacking their food and it bothers you, guess what? That's where your attention is. And then what happens, it's what the brain does. Notice when you place your attention on something like that, it just gets loud. (laughs) Oh, we human beings were pretty funny. It just gets louder and louder and louder until you want to pull your hair out And you want to, you know, get up and scream and like scream, stop smacking your food. So anyway, the person who commented about this, whether or not I'm smacking or not, and it's, you know, part of me didn't want to create this episode, but the thing is this, I was like, Hmm, I don't know if I'm smacking, but I am close to a microphone. Maybe if I'm smacking and people have never noticed it, now they might notice it because of this. And I want to point out also in the event that you do notice it. And by the way, all people smack all the time. 
It's just the degree to which they smack. I mean, we're human beings. We have a mouth. We, you know, we ingest food. It's what the body does. But if for any reason you may be annoyed by that, then simply this is a great exercise for you. And thank you very much. Move your attention. Okay. So we can talk about petty annoyances. And what we simply have to do is move our attention away from that. Because I don't know about you, but there are many things in life that can annoy me. Everything from traffic, and I, I'm going to be transparent, that used to annoy me. That this day and age, I'm kind of like, well, okay, it is what it is, and I let it go. So, th- you know, life can be full of petty annoyances. And for many, <laughs> you know, for many of you, your petty annoyance is named mother-in-law. And sorry to all you, I apologize to all you mother-in-laws. But how many of you, for example, you're going home for the you know family vacation and you're like, okay, I, I, you know Thanksgiving or whatever, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to brace because I'm going to be around my sister or my brother or my father or my mother or my mother-in-law, and you're bracing yourself before you get there because you know they're going to get under your skin. And then you go there for family vacation and you can't wait to leave. Why? Because you're allowing them to annoy you because you're placing your attention on it. So a bit repetitive here is the most important thing that you can do in life is master your attention. And about life circumstances, today I was in my transformational group and I have hundreds of people in there and we're about to wrap up this round. It's a three month program, well actually 14 week program that's complete life transformation. And someone was into their self-pity. And we human beings love to get into our self-pity. And I'd mentioned to her that, you know what, we are where our attention is. And what I want to create here is the, the distinction in thinking between positive attitude and self-pity. Because she was actually around the family member and she was actually not having a positive attitude about it. And she was misunderstanding, thinking I was saying, you know, you always 100% of the time you have to be, you know, Susie Sunshine and you have to have the positive attitude all the time. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is where do you keep your attention? Because for so many things that happen in life are not so many, everything is whether it be your health or your money or your relationships or whatever it is, examine. Examine where you have your attention relative to that. You don't want to share something here. I was talking about the summer solstice. If I'm being completely candid right now, I physically do not feel, not feel, but feel well in this moment. I just don't feel well in the moment. However, what I do not do is I do not let myself focus on how I physically feel. I have to move my attention. So if you're having perceptions and attitudes that do not serve you, what you want to look at is, is your attention on those perceptions and attitudes? I mean, if you're flying off the handle and you're mad and you're throwing tantrums and all this kind of stuff, Guess what? You're mad because, well, you're mad because whatever it is that you allowed to anger you, but when you stew upon it and stew on it and stew on it and stew on it, guess what? That's where your attention is. So let's look at life. Let's look at your life circumstances. Now, you probably have already come to this conclusion, but you know what? I'm going to tell you a a truth and a reality that's hard for a lot of us. And that truth is this. It is your life, your external life, is a reflection of your attention. Now, you might be in circumstances that were created over a length of time. What you want to look at is where was your attention over that length of time that created those circumstances? And that's really vital, but rarely, you know, rarely do we ever do that. I remember a long while back, 
someone said to me, Jim, if my beliefs are unconscious, then how do I know what my subconscious beliefs are? And I said, that's really easy. Just look at your environment because your environment is a reflection of your beliefs, your subconscious beliefs objectified because we, we live, which is our unconscious identity. We live that day in, day out without even knowing we're living that subconscious identity throughout our day. And it colors everything about our day. And if you really want to know back, you know, to loop this back around, if you want to know where you hold the majority of your attention, look at the circumstances of your life. Because your circumstances are a reflection of where you hold your attention. And if you want to change your circumstances, then change your attention relative to what it is that's creating those circumstances. Here for a moment and illustrate something else about health and wellness. We live in a world, and especially in the United States, where about 80% of the population is overweight. And because they are, that creates for a large part of the population, significant health concerns. And what I want you to look at is your health. What is your attention and where are you holding your attention regarding matters of health? Look at your health. If you're in perfect health or seemingly perfect health, where's your attention relative to what you're creating? And I remember when I was in the hospital, you know, last year, I was in the hospital twice last year once for heart failure and once for a hemorrhagic stroke. And I have never, never liked hospitals ever. And when I went to the hospital the first time, I mean, I was so consumed with what was happening. I didn't place my attention on, oh my gosh, all of the analytics about, whoa, I've got heart failure and all this kind of stuff. Or the doctor said that I had heart failure. I was at, and, and, one of, my, one of the cardiologists was really positive. He was the senior cardiologist. And the junior cardiologist was um, not positive. You know, the senior car- cardiologist is like, you know, you're probably going to heal and this is what's going to happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, then the junior cardiologist was like, ooh, you know, you could have like 30% heart function for the rest of your life, blah, 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 blah. And now we're talking about attention. Where did I place my attention? My attention was on, actually, I am not going to listen to either of these people about a possibility of healing. He, my, the senior cardiologist said, he goes, you know, I give you about a 70% chance of full recovery. I didn't go there. And the junior cardiologist is like, you know, you could have heart failure for the rest of your life in terms of 30% heart function. I definitely didn't go there. So look at your disposition in life. And are you a worrier? If you're a worrier, look where that takes your attention. Now let's change that word a little bit. What if you are a warrior? Meaning that, you know what, you stand in your power. Then you have to look at, okay, where does that take my attention? And where do I want to keep my attention? So as I said earlier, I was not feeling well about two hours ago. And I'm of the, of the mindset, of the opinion, of the brain set, of the thought processes that I am a healthy, well human being. And I also know working with a shaman for many years, there are days that I've had multiple days where I'm like, hmm, maybe I should go to the ER today. And I've called my brother-in-law and he's like, no, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're just fine. It's energy rest. And he's always been right. But earlier today when I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel well a couple of hours ago, I was like, Hmm, I started to get that thought about maybe I should think about considering going to the ER. And right now I'm feeling pretty much air quote normal. And the quote again, research has been done on this when it comes to our health is that your body is obviously a living organism, but your cells communicate with each other. And there's been a lot of research on this. And the quality of your health when you're healing or your long-term overall health is a reflection, I'm gonna use the words I'm using here, is where you hold your attention. And do you hold your attention, which also they call self-talk, on I am sick, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick, 
Or do you hold your attention on, I am 100% healthy? Now, you can use that example that I gave you in any area of your life. Because again, go look at the circumstances and the circumstances are reflective of the attention. So, what stands to reason is you keep your attention on what it is that you want to create in life. That being said also, a little bit of a a caveat here is we have to be responsible and rational and practical. I live in Sedona, Arizona, and right now we're having wildfires not too far away. Someone that I know earlier today said, where would we go if we have to evacuate? And where I didn't go is, oh my gosh, let me worry. Let me freak out. Let me mega, 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 mega plan. The reality is, is, you know, we should know that closer to the next couple of days. But where I also went is, you know what, I'm going to hold my attention in the best possible place that I can energetically. And then whatever is going to happen is going to happen. It's not within my control because I can't control anything. The person who said that, I know her as a worrier. Look where her attention is. And that's a big takeaway we can wrap up here. I've said it again. I'll say it what is this the third or fourth time is your life is a reflection of the a consummate amount of and where a cumulative amount of your attention. And if you want to create different things in life, you have to move your attention. So back to what I was just saying, there was a quote. I'm I'm probably going to mangle this. And I think it was by George Bernard Shaw. And he said, some people see things as they are and say, why? I see things as they are not and say, why not? Because you have to, you know, recognize here is that your attention is also, you know, where you choose to hold it is affected and completely colored by your subconscious identity. So if your subconscious identity says, you know what? You are poor and money's hard to make. That's where you will hold your attention. So what we have to do, a phrase that I heard one time, a very, very simple phrase, and we'll leave it at at that for a transformational takeaway. Before I give you that phrase, this is what I want you to do. I want you just to get quiet for an hour, and I want you to look, just take a, 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 a mental note, a survey, an assessment. Where has your thinking been emotionally about everything in your life or all the things that have crossed your life in the last two hours. Because guess what? Wherever your attention was in the last two hours is where you've conditioned yourself to hold your attention because it happens automatically. So answer the question there. If you want to see how you are prone to holding your attention, look at the last couple of hours and then go look at the, you know, the, the, um, all of the circumstances of your life. And there's your answer. So the transformational takeaway from this week is this. See the world as you want it to be, not as it is. See the world as you want it to be, not as it is. I'm not going to go into it here, but I know I've said it before, is that your brain, and science proves this, does not know the difference between real and imagined And the more that you imagine something over and over and over, the more real that it becomes for you. So when you, because you're programming yourself, when you see the world as you want it to be, not as it is, you're quite literally programming that, air quote, programming that into your subconscious mind and you are actually programming your brain. So write down, make a note somewhere. Seriously, this is that important. I have it written down and I have for a lot of years. See the world as you want it to be, not as it is. Okay, thanks for listening. I'll catch you over on the next episode. Bye-bye. If you're serious about transforming your life from the inside out, I have a free training that you're going to want to listen to, and it's helped tens of thousands of people all around the globe. The thing is, all of my students start here because when you learn to change your thinking, you'll change your life. Because as you already know, 
life happens from the inside out. The training is called Discover How to Eliminate Fear and Negativity in an Instant. So, go to jimfortin.com slash eliminate fear and start learning how to transform your life at a deeper level from the inside out. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com, and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes and a good one, by the way, (laughs) I'd be grateful. And through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.